Uh, pretty even in the weight and age. Metchkoff with a slight height advantage at six foot. And uh, Carlos Hicks just under six feet tall. I'm Lightning Mike Angove here with Monty Beetham, and it is promising to be, Monty, a superb evening. Well, Jason spoke about it. 100 kilos is the one. This is the final schedule for a three two in the rounds of Super Middleweight Kickboxing Action. This is the first fight out of the blue corner, representing the House of Pain in Hamilton. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Carlos the Flying Fiji! And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, representing ETK headquarters in Auckland. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Victor Slick Vic Metzcom! <laughs> fighters to the center ring, please, for fighters' instructions. All right, guys, first of all, you both protect yourselves at all times. You're listening to my instruction. Obey my instructions when I call a break. Stop fighting, step away from each other until I say go. Spinning back fists are allowed, no elbows, knees to the head are good. Both understand? Back to your corner, when the bell rings, the fight starts. Three, two, the rounds, when the bell rings, referee in charge is the Rebel John Conway. Are right, about to get underway with our first of three rounds. Two minutes, it's still an amateur bout. Knees to the head are allowed. King of the Ring rules, meaning you can throw the knee with two hands for a single knee, then you have to release and throw it with one thereafter. Joining me ringside, a man who's going to be fighting on Tuesday night for the New Zealand Cruiserweight boxing title. In this case, Monty, you've got a couple more weapons to watch out for, and there we saw immediately Carlos Hicks with the left kick up higher, though it was taken on the glove. That's right, did a bit of time with Jason Suddy and realised how dangerous kickboxing was and how involved with the extra body parts and how difficult it is as an art to take on. Carlos Hicks, he, uh, he's a, less of a puncher than Metchkoff, who, who works well, very Dutch style, with his hands to, to set up the low kicks. We've already seen from Hicks, he is very useful setting up his high kicks. Metchkoff looking for the right hand. One low to the lead thigh. Nice long right hand there from Hicks. He's, uh, although he's listed on the stats as, stats as being the shorter of the two, he certainly seems to be standing taller and he's picking him well from the outside using a good reach advantage. But he doesn't want to be staying in there tight because that's where Metchkoff does his best work, banging away to body and head. Nice little step over. Right hand hooks it on the way through, switching momentarily to southport. Said to be cautious there. Metchkoff almost caught him with the counter left hook, though he missed wildly with that spinning back fist. Liver shot there from Metchkoff. I think that may have affected Hicks. He does have his chin a little bit too high. Yes, that elbow's dropped badly. Metchkoff has hurt him. Metchkoff stalking now. Look to see a left hook coming upstairs with that right elbow dropped low. Metchkoff going to the body, working well now through that left leg there. Missed with the right hand. Cupping right hand, catching Hicks on the way out. Those liver shots can really take the stuffing out of you. We're heading into round two, of course, Monty. These uh, two minute rounds pass by a lot quicker than those three. Oh, a lot more explosive, isn't it? It's normally the extra minute on top of the two where you take your time, you wear them down a little bit more and, and apply your big arsenal. But when you only got two minutes, it's, it's all go from hell to scatter. Well, Hicks will have to go to work now. He landed a heavy, heavy leg kick. Metchkoff will continue to look to set up that body shot. Hicks has got some weight on that right hand. He could do with adding a left hook on the end of it, though. That's a slip on the way in from Metchkoff. Shakes his head. He's got plenty of granite in his chin. And there he went straight to the body. I've got to say, I'm a bit concerned about Hicks, the way he pops his chin up when that, body's, uh, when that body shot's coming in, although he did switch off with a nice switch up uppercut. Metchkoff, though, relentlessly working forward not allowing Hicks room to deliver those fancy shots that he likes to throw. 
Mitch got just a metronome, thrashing the leg down low, using the hands to do it. And misses narrowly with that left hook, just needs to throw it a little wider. And again, you see Hicks with the chin up. Needs to set on his punches a little, misses with the wild uppercut. Metchkov go, goes back downstairs, looking for that leather shot. It was taken on the glove, but it's all Metchkov going forward. There's a heavy leg kick there from Hicks. And he needs to set his feet and throw shots now. He cannot afford to let Metchkov just walk forward. It's a pretty even fight, but Metchkov, being the aggressor, will probably get the judges' attention. Just intercepted by the jab there, Metchkov. But now Hanks landed the front kick and coming on strong. in the corner this is the third and final Carlos Hicks in the blue corner in the black shorts Nick Metchkoff also in the black shorts with the red gloves coming out of the red corner and everything is on the line this is king in the ring it is the curtain race about two New Zealand amateur champions throwing down exchange of checks from both boys Hicks still pops that chin up a little bit too much Nice little right hand, Metchkov missing wildly. Hicks landed the right hand, managed to get himself out of the way. There's that front tip again. Downstairs to the body with the low kick. A little bit of a shiner downstairs. Family jewels. Metchkov, a little worse for wear over his left eye. A minor cut there. And we are almost through the first minute of the third and final. Metchkov missing with that spinning back fix. Hicks coming on now strongly, faking up with his jab. Metchkov coming forward, but he's actually walking on to shots now. And Hicks being a bit more elusive. And landing that right hand very well indeed. He's found his range. Missing with the leaping knee, Hicks. Spinning back kick, ugly but effective. There's a left hook counter from Metzkoff. Now he's found a little bit of range. 40 seconds to go in the round, still everything very much on the line, but Hicks is edging ahead, doubling up on the jab. Hicks, when he moves, he works very well. Landed another front kick there. Metchkoff dropping his head dangerously low. Just 20 seconds to go in the round. This is the third and final. Hicks had noticed him drop, went for the coup de grand knee, missed it. Well, plenty of effort from both boys. Metchkoff not backing off. Everything's still very much on the line. That left kick taken on the glove. Step up left knee with the right hand by Hicks. Finishing the round stronger. Well, it was most certainly Hicks's round in the third and final, though Metchkoff moved forward strongly throughout. He was picked off. Question will be, how did the judges score the second round? The first clearly to Metchkoff. That second one, it looked as if Hicks might have stolen it. And you could see furious flurries in that third and final, Monty. Well, you see Carlos Hicks then, it was like in the first two rounds, he was biding his time. Noticeable difference in terms of intensity and output that he threw in that third round. And I think he might have just done enough, being the aggressive guy coming forward. A little bit more tired, Mitchkov. Well, unofficially, we have it in the commentary corner, narrowly in, in favour of Carlos Hicks. But that second round was very close. Metchkov started strongly, Hicks finished strongly. This is our curtain raiser, of course, coming up next will be the first of our heavyweight quarterfinals. Joel Masters versus the Kyokushin kid, Jamie Eads. Carlos Hicks, he's very happy, he's confident. Like 
And the fighters are coming to centre ring. A bit of consultation over the scorecards. And Lieutenant Dan Hennessy about to reveal the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision where we find a majority decision winner. Your winner fighting out of the blue corner, Carlos, the flying Fijian hits. Well, if it was a majority, it means one of the judges and scored in a draw. A very close Anderson fight indeed. Our man, Monty Beethan, to chat to the victor, Carlos Hicks. Well, Carlos, talk to us first about the liver and how does that feel? I mean, taking one of those early on and coming back to win a fight is pretty impressive. Oh, man, big ups to Victor. Hey, this is the... Half of my losses are to this guy. Yeah, he's, he's a monster, man. So it's right now, it's 2-1. Vic, any time, brother? Ah, uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, it was like... Uh, part of your strategy was that after the first two rounds to sort of bide your time. The third one was a noticeable increase in tempo. Was that always a ploy? Yeah, well, well we always knew that he would always try and smother me, so the plan was to just keep that distance and, you know, fight from the outside without doing everything my best. So, oh, can I just say something? Um, I lost my grandmother on Wednesday in Fiji. Oh, my whole family was supposed to be here tonight. They all flew down last night. I just want to say, because they got the um, fight to Fiji. Everyone in Fiji, Nana, I love you, I miss you. And this one's for you. He's a legend with beautiful words. Thank you very much. Carlos Hicks, ladies and gentlemen.